the man who is in the mummy in a theater near you tomorrow night wearing an 85 Bears, <laughs> Ditka, Ryan type sweater, yeah, okay. Mr. Jake Johnson, as he's known on his Twitter handle. Good to see you, Jake Johnson. Great to be here. Thanks. So how old is that sweater that you are wearing right now? You know, it's an authentic one. It's not like a Salvation Army buy, okay. so I have no idea. It's one of those sweaters that was just in my drawer at some point. Is that right? So I'm like, somebody in my family had this, mm -hmm. and then it went towards me when I was too little to fit into it. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, it was on my shoulders, and... Is it possible that Dan Hampton snuck into your dream and left it in your drawer or something like that? Or? If Hampton actually came into my dream and put this in, it would be, my life would be complete. That sounds like a bad Billy Ocean song, get out of my dream and into my drawer or something like that. It's the would, worst would, Ocean song if it's Dan Hampton, a Dan. terrifying lineman out of Chicago. Who else we got there? Would get Gary Fensick? Fensick, number what? 45. You got Singletary, even though we all know him as a niner. He's always a bear. By the way, how come Singletary's not in the league as a head coach? Well, he kind of had a chance. Yeah. Remember that? He said Can't Vernon, win with him, won't win with him. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. He sent Vernus, Vernon Davis off. He kicked because him off Rich, the sidelines. Because, Rich, you can't win center. with him, you won't win with him. <laughs> Pretty much. Love Singletary. Can't do it. I don't, can't, can't do it. Won't can't, do it. Won't, won't do it. Won't do it. What an attitude. I, I mean, I thought that, you know, Baylor would reach out to him with all the crap that was going on in their school because yeah, he's one of the greatest right. Baylor Bears of all that's time. Right. I think he would have been up for that, too, but they oh, didn't. he would have cleaned up that locker room in a hurry. So I, I know you were listening to the Shaq conversation, Jake. Yeah. Um, and first thing when I went back to say hi to you uh, in our green room is you're, you've got an issue with the super teams yeah. in the NBA as well. I haven't watched a game of these playoffs, and I'm not going to. I find them so boring. I think the super teams are terrible. Not even just to see I if do, the Warriors honestly, get tripped up or but I'm not even doing it as like a rebellion. Okay. It's not like this is my big stand against the NBA. I just don't care. I like the NBA when you got a bunch of teams competing and every once in a while you'll have a team breakthrough. I knew I made a bet with my buddy, uh, Eric Edelstein, an actor. Mm -hmm. and I hope you're watching because I'm about to win that. Or I won the first bet. Which is what? Which is I knew it was going to be the Cavs Warriors. Mm -hmm. So why would you watch the regular season? It's JV. It's practice. So he took the field against Cavs Warriors? He took the field. Straight up 100 bucks, took the field. Would we have done that? I don't think we would have done that. I you mean, knew it was would we have taken the teams. field or would we have well, taken, taken Cavs the field? Warriors? Well, we have taken the field. I think you're taking Cavs Warriors. You have, unless there's an injury, but even if there's an injury, when Durant went down, the Cavs were, I mean, uh, the Warriors were still winning. Yeah. So uh, you took, so you, he, your buddy Eric took the field. So that's bet the, one that he lost. What's the other one? There isn't a second one. But because um, I was thinking we were texting and he said, who do you like in this? And I don't know because I haven't watched it. Uh, I was hoping you'd say that you thought the Warriors would go 16-0 and in the playoffs. Yeah, now, that, that would have been, been a shot to that call. That would have been, by the way, that's a Vegas bet. If you, That's what you do next year. Mm -hmm. If this Super Team's back, you say, I want to bet early that they're going to sweep the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I have Jake Johnson, the mummy, in theaters near you again on Friday with uh, with Tom Cruise. We'll talk about that Russell Crowe, Courtney B. Vance, Courtney B. Vance who was awesome man. in the uh, in the People versus O.J. Simpson the as and Johnny one of the Cochran. Most fun guys too. Yeah, we had him here on this show, and he was. I, I mean, I loved chatting with him. Yeah. Hunt for Red October yeah. from back in the day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> serious bad. business right there. Um, and so, part of your dislike of a super team and the fact that uh, do you have a problem with LeBron? Got no, something with him I, or what? Uh, look, I think what I actually – I like what LeBron's doing in life and in business. Yes. He seems like a really smart person who gets it. But and he, he was great in Trainwreck, too. Yeah, I he's mean, a good actor. He was terrific Everything in Trainwreck. He's good in commercials. Right. A lot of these actors in commercials are terrible. Mm -hmm. He's got timing. Mm -hmm. He just – this is the LeBron James League. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just not that interested in it. Now, deep down, though, as you're sitting here as a Chicago Bear fan, yeah. wearing your, your, your Gary Fensick pride on your sleeve literally yeah. right now, how much of this is born out of the fact that you don't want him to be in the conversation with Michael Jordan? Jake, come on. I mean, How much is born out of this Chicago-type sports? I, I'm so deep into my own stuff that I would need a therapist to break through to really <laughs> give you that answer, but I don't think it nice is. Answer. You know, it might be. Yeah. It might be I got the chip on my shoulder and now, you know, the league is different. But I actually think part of the big problem is the amount of media talking about those rings. And if you listen to Shaq and everybody talking, everything is ring-based. Mm -hmm. If you don't get a ring, what was your career? And so now all these guys coming up, they just want those rings. There's mm -hmm. got to be more than the rings. Well, it certainly wasn't with Jordan. I mean, when Jordan was at, he won all the rings. Yes. 
He's perfect in the NBA. Nobody touched him nobody in the NBA Finals. Him. That's right. The only person that could get rid of him was himself when That's he right. when he's when he stepped away from the league to try he baseball. Had whatever he had. Whatever, whatever was he, he was we doing. We don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't talk about Fight Club. We don't talk about Fight Club. Whatever Michael was doing, Michael was doing. What do you think of your Bears, Jake um, Johnson? What do you think? What's well, your, what's I'm going really on here? excited, and I'm a little confused why everybody's hating what Ryan Pace is doing, because. Everybody's saying he had a terrible draft. He's doing a terrible free agencies. But if you look at our organization okay. as the Bears, yes. we haven't been doing very much. At all. At all for years. Right. So, of course, we could get that guy Solomon, the defensive lineman who everybody wanted. Yeah, right. He's going to change our whole franchise? I'm sure he's going to be a great defensive player. It's a quarterback league. We now have two potential quarterbacks. Well, so you like Mitchell Trubisky? I'm going to be honest, I've never seen the kid play. <laughs> I don't watch North Carolina football, no, right. but I like the hope of Mitchell the Trubisky. The hope of Trubisky. It's like, this is what it's about. We yeah. now have a chance. I mean, when Aaron Rodgers came out to Green Bay, yes. if you read the scout reports on him, he had a lot of flaws. Look at what he turned into. Look at him. So now we've got a guy like Mitchell. Maybe he could be great. He could sit on the bench behind this guy, uh, Glennon. Yes. Who I don't know a lot about him either. Yeah. It's funny. One time Warren Sapp referred to him as Mick Glennon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's what he called him, Mick Glennon. Mick Glennon. And, 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 and after a commercial break, like Marshall Falk turns over to me, you know it's Glennon, right? And he sort of gave him this look like, oh, God, I called him McLennan. And then he realized, actually, it's a that's, perfect it's nickname. And bad. then kept on. He yeah. just kept doubling and tripling down on that's calling a, him But that. what do you think of the Bears? <sighs> Does that sigh uh, yeah. offer you? I, I don't know what the hell they're doing. They're doing. Right. That, you know, Glennon will get them. I, I thought they would try and see what they could do with him, which right. wasn't kind of a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, Trubisky could be exactly what you're talking about. Last year, Chris Law over there, the the bearded one, um, whose Eagles team drafted Carson Wentz. Yeah, I remember. Everyone thought great pick, but we won't see him for two years. Then he starts, and he started all sixteen games and was phenomenal. That's so right. you just do you never know. know. But even if Mitch sits for a year, and here's my question: So let's say Glennon has a great year, and the Bears then sign him to the three year deal that they have. Can't we trade him? Possibly can do that, but then but then you start from scratch again. And then the problem is, is I'm concerned because I think John Fox is an excellent coach in too. the NFL. I have a feeling Banjo he's too. I have a feeling he's gonna eat it. Oh, you do? Yeah. So you think this year we go like six and ten, the group gets fired, we Which get rid of Glennon, now we're starting over with Mitch and he's had a year to study. And he's got he attached at the hip with a new coach. Right. Maybe a coach Bob Stoops, fresh from Oklahoma. Just throwing all yeah. sorts of crap against the wall with zero backing. Or maybe backing we to... bring back Mike Singletary. <laughs> Can't win with him, won't win with him. Come or, on home, or, Iron Mike. Or Hurricane Ditka, yes. or what is it from back in the uh, Saturday Night Live days? Right. Uh, the Mummy in theaters near you on Friday. Uh, I was telling you off camera, I mean, to be in a movie, period, let alone an action yeah. film, well, it, it, a lot of people think the Mummy a horror movie, but this is, you know, a cruise action film that's wrapped in something that has been uh, put in theaters before in The Mummy. That's right. You're in an, I mean, bullets the, are flying. You're in a scene with Tom Cruise, Yeah, man. the movie that I'm in, I'm in basically the first act of the movie and yes. then without giving anything away, I pop back in. Yes. But the movie that I was pitched to be in was just an action war movie with Tom Cruise where we do our own stunts and we jump off buildings and... I wanted to experience it. Yeah. I talked to the director. I hadn't read the script. And I said, really, I didn't need to read the script. Mm -hmm. I was like, I get to be Tom Cruise's buddy in an action movie, <laughs> and you're talking about shooting in Africa? Yeah. Yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. I get to run around and follow him around and, you know, train with him. And yeah. we would like, you know, Tom Cruise has like a Tom Brady vibe. You know, he's the first guy on set every day. He's the last to leave. He works harder than everybody. He knows everybody else's lines. So I felt like... Oh, I get to be like a slot receiver who might not have been drafted, but I'm gonna You're work so hard. I'm the one like with Tom Cruise. Wow, look at me jumping off buildings. Now you trade Tom Cruise away. I'm like, I'm not jumping off a building for this movie. You're the Tom Waddle of the operation. <laughs> I'm the Tom Waddle, all of this one. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I was like, I can catch a third down. Can I, I like third and two, throw it to me outside of that. You're a chain mover when it comes to <laughs> exactly. uh, to Cruise. Uh, did you uh, train with him or anything like that? We did. So when I got the job, he told us what we had to do, and everything's in two shots. What do you mean? 
So what I mean is we'll have to run a block while things are blowing up around us and then jump off a three-story building onto a two-story building, then climb something and blah, blah, undo all this. And I have to keep up with him because he wanted to do it without any edits. Just like that episode of New Girl you were in. I mean, every, me and Max Greenfield just, <laughs> just exploding <laughs> over things. Old Schmitty and Nick. Right. And so they basically, his trainers ran me through basically a CrossFit type exercise to see where I was at. And how, where were you at? I was a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> and so I spent the summer training with his trainers and with him. Uh, it's because we shot all the stunts at the end of the movie. Damn. Uh, but was, I got to tell you, it was fun because, like, he's blasting classic rock. So you're sitting there with Tom Cruise, listening to classic rock. Like on, what? You, what, you gotta, what? What song was on the top? Everything. He, it was like a Spotify mix. So it was, you know, just Zeppelin's mm -hmm. blasting, the Who's blasting, mm -hmm. and you're throwing up weights. I'm like, I, I get this. Yeah. Then when he leaves and I'm in like 24 hour fitness alone, I'm like, I don't get this. <laughs> <laughs> this is back to a terrible day of my life being like, it curls ass. <laughs> But if he's there, the music's blasting, I'm like, all right, man, let's do some burpees. Let's get weird. <laughs> Had you met Tom Cruise ever before this no. first meeting? So were you nervous? Yeah, like I was nervous. So basically, the I got the job, I was in, and then I saw what I had to do, and I did have hesitation. So I started saying, like, I, there was a scene where we're on a three-story building, and it collapses, and then we get thrown off and pulled in a hole, and I go... I know that maniac's going to want to do that, <laughs> but I got a family to feed. Uh, and so they said, Tom wants to talk to you. So they flew me to London, and my first meeting with him was a six-hour meeting, and we rarely broke eye contact. Ooh. And the Tom Cruise stuff is true. Like, Intense. he locks in. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I learned about him, which was really fun, was in that, because I'm not that intense. Right. So we would have this intensity, but then I could say, you were awesome in Magnolia, man. <laughs> and he would be like, thank you. Did you get a word? I was going to say, did you get a word in or was it just him it, talking no, he, yeah, for it six is. hours? It's back and forth. Okay. I felt like it was like an inside the actor's studio at a certain point. Because he told me why he wanted me to do the stunts. There's a method to his madness. And I got it all. Everything made sense. And then we were just feeling each other out. So I started asking him about his movies. He told me about them. We talked. And like which one did you ask him about? Born on the Fourth we talked about. Okay. Rain Man he told me about. Magnolia. You know, he just our, in it. That's our poll question today. Hit, a, hit Jake Johnson up with yeah, our poll question. What's the best Tom Cruise movie, Jake? Risky Business, Top Gun, A Few Good Men, Jerry Maguire, Rain Man. Those were the five choices we you decided to You know, I just it saw Jerry Maguire again randomly after it's, working with him. So it good, is it? so good. It's a perfect movie. It's a, such a fun, good movie. So it's going to be hard. I'm going to just say Jerry Maguire because it's the last one I saw and I'm simple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to live with that one. Well, in that respect, that would be risky business for you, Law. Yeah. And for me, A Few Good Men, which I saw. So good. Yeah, we, we had Kevin Bacon on a few weeks oh, ago, great. and I asked him about that final scene. Like, what was that like, right. you know, with Jack Nicholson going through it? And he said that Nicholson did it for everybody, even though the camera wasn't on him, the same way about 50 times in That's a row. Amazing. And he said that was unbelievable yeah. that's a remote drop for me as a few good men oh, yeah for did, sure did yeah. tom cruise tell you during this meeting that he loved you and let's be cops like, yeah. like you <laughs> said magnolias and he's like i loved you he's like tell me about your performance and as uh, whatever cops. my character's first <laughs> name was <laughs> let's a, be well, the command center was a huge yeah. fan yeah. of let's be cops i did catch him on something because <laughs> uh, the director cast me in it because he was a new girl fan so i the reason i got in it was alice kurtzman kurtzman wrote it he's like i, I put you in mind for this and Tom, I think, was pretending to be a New Girl fan out of respect <laughs> because I was asking his about his stuff, and he obviously hadn't seen any of my stuff. And then he was like, great job on the TV show. It's fun. I was like, yeah. And then as we were walking, he's like, is it hard shooting in front of an audience? And I was like, it's single cam. You don't want to watch it. Like, oh, he okay. tried. Yeah, and I go, it's single cam. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's okay. You Tell you're a busy guy. You got a bunch and, of stuff. And you're like, now my new girl is the mummy. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. Uh, Friday, June 9th in theaters tomorrow. Come back anytime. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, it was a lot, you. lot of fun seeing you <laughs> again. Uh, you. When we come back, there's a clip. And then there's also something you may not know, Jake, about the history of the mummy. Uh, that I think we're going to surprise you with. I can guarantee I don't. Uh, you don't. That's coming up next here uh, on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. Isn't it amazing you can download an app with your thumbprint? You should download our app with your thumbprint. 